John 15, Jesus talks about abiding in him, right? And when we abide in him, when we walk with him, when we are attached to him, there is fruit that comes out of our lives. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And, and because you're a branch and you're attached, you receive fruit that he produces through your life. It's not anything you do. So these things we're going to talk about, we're going to read that Paul says, these aren't things that you, oh, you grit it out, you work it up, you, you do your part. Man, if I could just grind a little harder, right, I'll, I'll achieve these things. In fact, we said this, this series is called Fruit of the Spirit, Receive, Not Achieve. This is not about achieving. This is about when we walk with the Lord, when we walk hand in hand with Jesus, every day we walk in step with him. Here are the things that come out of our lives. And Paul says this in Galatians 5. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit, love, we talked about that last week, joy. You know, Jeffrey referenced, we just talked about this the other week. And the beauty of it is, when you walk in step with the Lord, he gives you something. Listen, your circumstances say you shouldn't have. If you don't know the story of what's going on, Basically, there's a, a fire burning against Paul and Barnabas, and people are mad about them being there preaching. And now they said, well, if you're not going to listen and you Jews aren't going to listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to offer this opportunity to know the living Lord to the Gentiles. It was like pouring gas on an already burning fire. Now it's raging because Jews and Gentiles did not coexist well, right? They, the Jews thought they basically had the, the, the rights to God for themselves. And Paul is saying, listen, you are saying no to this opportunity. Well, he has sent us to deliver it to the Gentiles. And I'm telling you, it was the most polarizing comment that could have been made. And now the fires really begin to burn against Paul and Barnabas. When the Gentiles heard this, they were very glad and they thanked the Lord for his message and all who were chosen for eternal life became believers. So these Gentiles begin now to follow the Lord. Why is that a big deal? Probably because the majority of you that hear my voice this morning, you're Gentiles. If this day does not happen, you and I may not be sitting where we're sitting. And these Gentiles then begin to spread the gospel where they all went. So the Lord's message spread throughout the region, the Roman Empire. It begins to spread. It's phenomenal. Then the Jews stirred up influential religious women. So you want, you want to make something happen? Get the ladies stirred up. And the ladies get stirred up. And look at what happened. And the leaders of the city, and they incited a mob against Paul and Barnabas. And they, get this, ran them out of town. I've had some bad speaking engagements where nobody laughed at jokes and nobody seemed to engage with my stories. But I've never been run out of town. They ran them out of town. So you would think... Paul and Barnabas and the other believers had their tails between their legs. So they shook the dust from their feet as a sign of rejection and they went to the town of Iconium. They shook the dust off and just said, you know what? We're not gonna let it stop us. And the believers, this is a powerful statement, were filled with, if you're sitting in the room with me today, I would say filled with what? Joy. They were filled with joy. Joy and with the Holy Spirit. See, we pastors have done a very good job making this really complicated because you gotta come back every week. But let me uncomplicate it for you. It's not how many books you read. It's not how much of the Bible you've memorized. It's not uh, how many seminars you've attended. You know what it is? It's that obedient walk daily with the Lord. Mike, I want those fruits to be evident in my life. Okay, here's the challenge. Walk with him every day. Well, how do we do that? Principle number one, ready? They surrendered to God's purposes. See, something happens when we begin to walk with him every day. We surrender to his purposes. You and I cannot side by side walk with him every day and choose what we want to do. No, we begin to choose what 
he wants us to do. You could write this down. Maybe this is the phrase you're familiar with, the will of God, right? You know what the will of God is? It's exactly what God created you to do. Principle number two, ready? They serve the needs of others. I want you to write down this little thought under number two. Your purpose is always tied to others. If you walk in step with the Spirit and you are abiding in Christ, you will realize this powerful fact, your life is not about you. Your life will be about others. One of the greatest evidences of fruit in our lives is others. Through the needs of others, you find real joy. See, happiness comes when we get our bonus. Happiness comes when we get our promotion. Happiness comes when we move neighborhoods. Happiness comes from getting a new car or a new truck. Happiness comes from going on vacation. And all of those things are awesome, wonderful things, but they're all temporary, right? The car gets old, the house gets expensive, vacation comes to an end, all those things. But joy comes from doing something for someone who can't do anything in return for you. Finally, number three, and this is, this is a big one. This is not something we usually think about with joy. They shook off the joy stealers. They shook them off. Jesus did the same thing. If you go through the, the Gospels, Daniel and I were having this conversation the other day. There are toxic people. We have to shake the dust off our feet and move on. Look at what it said. And they shook the dust from their feet as a sign of rejection, and they went to the town of Iconium. They did not let others rob their joy. Ladies and gentlemen, there are joy stealers in life. See, I don't know what you're walking through today. If, if you would have told me March the 6th, hey, y'all aren't going to meet live in person Till July the 12th, I'd have gone, oh, that is going to be the worst thing ever. And you know what all of us have found in the middle of this? If we walk with the Lord, we found some joy, didn't we? Because it's not about achieving the biggest Easter in the history of North Star. It's, not, it, it's about that consistent daily walk with Christ where we go, he's working in spite of what our circumstances say.